good morning. It is day eight on the trail and without a proper shower. Now we've had a few shower pouches, but now it's time for the real thing. So I've got this little hot water system made by Zodi that we're gonna test out here. We've used it before, um, way before we even had the turtle back. This is a more of an updated version of it. My concern is because we're at almost 11,000 feet, it might not light. So before I drag out all our shower stuff, let's see if this thing will crank up. So it's about as basic as you can get. You've got a platform for your one pound propane tank, shower hose, pump hose, and here's your unit. Shower hose goes here, pump hose goes here. Screw this guy on. And what I like about this unit is they actually give you some extension legs, which is really an improvement over the last unit that we had from them because the last unit was fairly unstable. And I was afraid of starting a fire. So this is a much, much better platform to operate off of. Boom. And now your only weakness is how well this is pushed in. All right. And then in here we have our pump. So this is four D cell batteries inside of this power pack. And then this is the pump that you can drop into a bucket a stream I wouldn't do a stream I'd probably put everything in a bucket first just to make sure you're not getting a lot of debris up in here let's see if this thing will light oh yeah all right well it's just a lazy day around camp we're gonna actually end up staying here another day go down to the creek take some showers get all cleaned up before we continue our trek north but uh, because we are stationary, we're using quite a bit of power, charging things, running the fridge, stuff like that. And with the rooftop tent on the rack, we don't have the advantage of our 100 amp ZAMP solar panel up there. So I've got a little different setup that someone sent us to play with. The panel itself is from Merlin Solar. And then a lot of you have asked why I wasn't utilizing the Red Arc MPPT solar controller and part of that was just because I already had the ZAMP controller installed in the back and so I wasn't using it. So now today I'm going to just tap into this. It's kind of a little bit of a temporary setup just because we're in a state of flux right now kind of deciding how these rigs are going to work together. So uh, I wasn't able to get the right gauge wire so I've actually created a heavier gauge cable for the ground side of the solar itself using three number, I think these are 16s. Um, not ideal, but hey, we're out on the trail. It will carry the load that we need it to carry. So I'm just gonna tap into this, and this is using a SAE connector. This is what uh, we prefer just because it does protect the terminals a lot better than some of the other options. Uh, the panel itself came with an Anderson plug on it. Anderson plugs are great in some situations, but I prefer the small watertight seal of the SAE connector. So I've cut that off of this panel and now I'm just going to tap into the DC to DC charger. So let's get this guy connected. And I prefer using these bare splice terminals. These are just, they come in a kit off of Amazon and they also come with heat shrink. I prefer doing that than the ones that are kind of all-inclusive with the heat shrink already built onto it. And the reason for that is sometimes when you go to shrink it, if you've damaged that coating, it can actually open itself up similar to one of these connections right here. Um, so eventually I'll be changing all this out as well just to make it a little bit better insulated. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to say, hey, aren't you going to solder that connection? That's what you're supposed to do for automotive. Well, I've been crimping terminals most of my life with my background being an electrician. A properly crimped terminal is just as solid as a soldered connection. Feel free to comment down below, but 
I have never had a single termination fail. Knock on silver. This little guy has been so handy for these little trail mods and stuff. And it's great for melting the cheese on top of your chili cheese hot dog. There we go. Another thing, it's always smart to take off any jewelry that you might be wearing whenever you're working on these batteries. I know a guy who tried to weld a ring to his finger and it didn't work out so well. All right, got a little bit of sun, so let's see if this thing's gonna work the way we hope. I do apologize for the hair. It's shower day and we just haven't got around to that yet. <laughs> we got Caroline over here playing. What are you playing, Mario Party? Mario Party. Awesome. That Nintendo Switch has been a really, really cool toy for her to have because she can play Minecraft on it. She can also get active and do Mario Party. Then we can all play as a family. So it's really something fun to carry along with us. So one of the things that we added to Sarah's GX was this 4th D solar controller. And again, it already came prepped with a Anderson plug, so we kind of went with it on her vehicle. So I'm gonna take the 90 watt, I think it's a 90 watt panel, get it laid out, hook it up, and keep her new Odyssey battery nice and topped off as well. She's not running as many accessories as what the Forerunner is, but just to help with the battery life, we wanna keep it topped off as much as possible. So let's get that set up. And as much as I hate all of these little plastic covers and stuff, it worked out really well for mounting this unit right here, even down to the uh, Anderson plug itself. Mario Kart, I mean Mario Party, we go bonkers. Do you? We're like so mean at each other. Really? We got mama back here doing her workouts at 11,000 feet. I'm out of breath just walking from the tent to the other vehicle. <laughs> uh, I need to get active. Whew. Here comes the rain. Batting the hatches. Now I do get a lot of comments about the fact of having a Blue Sea ACR or automatic charging relay along with the DC to DC charger. The DC to DC charger is a battery isolator. However, it does not manually link the batteries together. The Blue Sea ACR isn't installed for the automatic charging relay purpose. It's installed because it has a 400 amp continuous rating so that if I need to, I can link these batteries with the flip of a switch to jump start, run the winch, or help out the compressor. So that's why that's in here. It has nothing to do with the automatic charging relay circuit. However, if the DC to DC charger was to go out, you got a backup. That works. Let's get out of this rain. Get it, man. What happened? I totally forgot. We laid the sleeping bag on the roof of the tent to just help it air out. We got a wash job out of it. <laughs> Dang oh. on it. Hope it's not too cold tonight. Oh, seriously. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some sunshine later. Let's hope so. Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. Smooth move, x lax all right, we gotta get this water out too. What's for lunch? Uh, sandwiches. Sandwiches? Yeah, Kev's having a roll up. 
with lettuce roll up and I'm gonna have a whole wheat roll up. Yum. And I'm in the process of figuring out which one of these washers is gonna help me fix a problem on that bumper. So you may have noticed by now, we've been running a ratchet strap on this high lift jack tied to the roof rack and that's because there's a severe rattle coming from this right rear corner. And the best we could isolate it to is the bumper itself. Something about it is just beating and banging against either a body panel or the frame itself. I have a suspicion on what it is. And so I'm gonna get the high lift out, I'm gonna jack it up, I'm gonna just take all the pressure off that I possibly can, take the bolts loose. A couple of them have some slots that are a little bit too big and it looks like with all the vibration over the years they've worked their way up into the grooves. Um, the best as I can remember, I think I had some washers on those, but they may have gotten left out when we put the long range fuel tank in the back. So I'm just going to pull them out, tighten everything up, put some washers on there and see if it fixes the problem because it sounds like something's coming apart. I swear though, I really think that because she's been listening to audiobooks, her reading has gotten much better. And maybe say Captain Marvel for later. So my goal here is twofold. I think that over time, the weight of the spare has tweaked this wing a little bit more than it would otherwise. So I'm hoping that I can spring it back a little bit. And then also, while we're up, I'm gonna take these outer mounting bolts and uh, put some washers in there and then really cinch them back in. In that situation, you really need some hardened washers, but I'm just having to use what we got here on the trail, so that'll probably do this for another five years. We're like folding in half up here. What? We're folding in half up here. Should just be going back to where you started. All right, so the first pass didn't fix that, but what I did is I've actually loosened both of those, and I want to put a shim under the front side of that mounting bracket to see if maybe we can recover some of our space here. All right, well that's looking a lot better compared to where it was earlier. It was resting really hard on this body panel. And every time we hit a bump, a spare tire would fluctuate. You hear this, knock, 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 knock. I think it was coming from right here, so we'll give this a go. That spacer gave me about an eighth inch of a clearance right here. It's not perfect. I'd like to have a little bit more, but I just don't have the hardware to make that happen here. So, let's see what happens. All right, so one last thing that I'm working on today is switching out this air up tool with this chuck. This is uh, Sarah's air up tool. Mine is out of commission for some reason. The digital readout's just not working at all. So uh, we only brought one compressor just to reduce weight, and that's the one that's here on silver. So um, with this new one, I just wanna get this really nice chuck swapped out because if you can see, there's only one side that's actually grabbing the valve stem with this guy. But with this guy, there's actually opposing teeth. So it gets a much better grab, especially on Silver here, who has just been abused when it comes to airing up for, you know, years now. So this guy will barely, barely even snag a thread, as this guy does a much better job. Plus, this will do less damage in the long term. So let's swap it out.
So we're actually going to take all of our shower stuff down to the river and get this thing going with a nice steaming five gallon bucket of hot water right from the source. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's crank this puppy up. Oh, now it's not going to light. Woo! That was stupid. Look at that. So, you want to explain why we have this, even though we don't need privacy? Uh, because it holds it has a top and so it holds all the steam in and so it stays nice and steamy and warm in there while you're taking a shower oh. It's the key. It is the key <laughs> Now we are cycling the water to heat up all of this water to the temperature that we want yeah. And if you were here you would dad's running hair. Yes, you would <laughs> So a common misconception about these little heaters is that it's instant and it's not it will heat the water to a certain temperature above the ambient temperature of the water that you're using. So the trick when you're pulling like cold water from a stream like this is put the hose back into the bucket and recycle it, recycle it, recycle it until the bucket is about bath water warm, maybe a little cooler because the last thing you want to do is get it too hot. We've done that before and it will scorch you. All right, we're getting close. Seven minutes to get five gallons of water from about 45, 50 degrees up to shower temp. It's pretty good. All right. Ready? Ready. Oh, it's perfect now. Okay. All right, so there's two ways you can actually do this. You can get the bucket hot enough that as it passes through here for its final pass, that it's hot enough for your shower, or you can heat the whole bucket up to it's just perfect and then turn the heater off to leave the pump running. So two different options there. And while you can do this by yourself, it is so handy to have someone out here manning the steam keeping everything rolling for you. Because the last thing you want to do is tip this guy over while you're uh, vulnerable. <laughs> so you can see how well this tent holds in the heat. Like it's a sauna in there right now. Feels so good. <laughs> Maybe this is what I do in the shower, <laughs> Mama's singing in the shower. <laughs> so, so one thing to remember, especially if you're doing this with kids, if the pump stops, all of the water that's currently in the coil is going to get extremely hot. So when you get the pump running again, it's going to come out the other side scalding. So make sure you stick it back in the bucket or do something else. I highly recommend that if you've got little ones, get the bucket up to temperature. That way you know what to expect and then turn off the heater. You'd be less likely to hurt somebody that way. So another huge, huge, huge thing to have in your kit is one of these bamboo boards. It's not just good for showers. It's also good for setting down outside your vehicle. If you just want to change shoes or change clothes, having something nice and clean to stand on is good. Oh man, does that feel good or what? Fresh shower. That was about a 10 minute run time with five gallons of hot water. I let my ambient water get a little too far away it is scalding me a bit but it was worth it. it feels so good so now we're just gonna take these hoses off without burning your hand. without burning your hand yep this is already cooled off now and we'll drain this puppy out drain the pump just in case 
If we ever get any freezing temps, we won't blow it up. It's not the greatest carrying bag for something that has a gas valve sticking off the side of it. So you definitely don't want to go throwing this around the floorboard of the car or the bed of the truck. I'm just going to put it in this five gallon bucket because that's all it's going to be used for anyhow. And that will help protect it for now. We used about maybe a, about a half a pound of propane for that run. That was a long amazing shower. That wasn't rush and get it done. Like that was nice. So nice. So you can find this on Amazon. You can check out our store link in the video description. It'll take you right there and lots of other little handy things. I think I even have the bamboo um, rack in there as well. So check it out. Hot water in a bag. All right, so fresh and so clean feels so good. We had gone eight days. This was eight, day eight, technically. So seven and three quarters of a day. And it felt so good. That five gallon bucket was just the right amount to feel luxurious, but yet still kind of move you quickly to wash up and clean up. But after that long of not having clean hair, feels real good to have clean hair. <laughs> So I will take it every three, five, seven days. It's going to feel great. Super excited. So now that we're clean and ready to cook some dinner. I think tonight we're going to have turkey burgers and roasted sweet potatoes. And it's going to be delicious. Let's go eat. What's for dinner? Hybrid burgers. Hybrid burgers? Can I have one? It looks a little different. Roll your sleeves up. Yeah, I had a little bit of ground beef left, and so I'm mixing it with ground turkey. Nice. So this would be a, uh, would be a turger? Burf turger. <laughs> a burkey. Burkey. There you go. <laughs> a jerky! A burkey turkey. A burkey tur burkey burger. There. A jerky.